at the beginning of the 17th century, the magnate in charge of this area was Maxivna of Do, whose castle is just across the bay. Uh, but after the Nine Years' War and the Ulster Plantation, he lost his position. And the land in this area was handed over to Tolico Boyle, Tolico Boyle, uh, who had taken the side of the crown during the latest disturbances, and he got his reward. Uh, the O'Boyles held on to the land for a couple of generations until the 1641 debacle, uh, after which all the lands were confiscated and ultimately came into the possession of the Ray family. Uh, and this was about 1700. They held on to the land until 1782, when the land was sold to Alexander Stewart, who was the brother of the Marquis of Londonderry. Um, the Stuarts um, ran out of male heirs at the, end of the at the end of the 19th century, and the last of them, a lady, married Sir Peter Bam, South African, and from then on the estate was known as the Stuart Bam Estate. Uh, in 1926, the Land Commission took over the whole estate and divided it up among the local uh, farmers. Some of it ended up in the forestry, with the Forestry Commission, and this area here, out to the headland, was taken over by the Capuchins in 1930. First of all as a novitiate, and then later as a house of theology for the training of uh, Capuchins who were intended to be priests. Uh, that lasted until 17, until 19, I should say, 72. In the meantime, however, the old manor house, which was still standing until the 60s, uh, became uninhabitable. Some of it was falling down. It was infested by rats and dry rot. And so the decision was taken in the 60s to demolish it and build the structure behind me. Uh, this was occupied in 1966. And for several years it was, as I say, uh, uh, a place for training theology students. That ended in 1972 when the students were transferred to Dublin because for some reason it was thought that there was a better flavor of theology available in Dublin, for reasons I can't account for. But um, in, since then it was used as a conference and retreat center. Uh, and in more recent times it has been run by the Diocese of Raffo with our support in conjunction with the Capuchins. Apart from the uh, retreats and conferences that are held here, uh, people flock from all over the, this part of Ireland, the north of Ireland, also Scotland and other places. They flock here as a place to uh, de-stress because with the forest behind us, the sea in front of us, and the mountains all around us enclosing us in a loving embrace, what better place could you go? to detox the spirit. Huh? So usually, uh, certainly during the summertime, but all the year round, we have lots of visitors, particularly at weekends, who come here uh, to uh, be revivified by the beauty of the place. And of course, everyone's welcome. Uh, the whole of Donegal is remarkable for its, for its beauty, and the whole of the wonderful coastline all the way down. But this little island, it's a little on petit coin de paradis, a little, a little corner of paradise. Uh, a little bit isolated, but all the better for that, uh, because it exudes a spirit of peace and restfulness, which is therapeutic to the spirit.